Hello again, everyone. We'll be doing another reaction video, this time to the public and cargo transportation feature highlights of City Skylines 2. And also go into a bit of the, uh, the second video they released on that topic, uh, showing a developer's insights. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Transport networks set the rhythm of life in your city. As they move people and cargo, they can create harmony and discord. This finely tuned orchestra of ships, vehicles, planes, and trains is yours. I do just want to say, I, uh, with the ship and the planes here, I really like the way they've done the airports, um, especially like with the center lines, the taxiway lines, stuff. Uh, the colors are not necessarily 100% accurate, but that's okay. Uh, I like the models they're using. They look really sharp. They look really clean. Takeoff maybe was a, a little bit rough there, but I'll, I'll forgive it again uh, because it's a game. To and it's not like to create a thriving city. metropolis, maintain a steady beat to keep your city in motion. You build a city from scratch in City Skylines 2. No public transport, no tracks, no runways. Creating these and other transportation networks is a crucial first step. After that, improving and integrating them paves the way for expansion. When you establish your city, citizens can take the bus or a taxi to get where they're going. These are the first transport options you'll unlock. They're reliable, cheap, and easy to route here, there, and everywhere. Traffic can Going to pause it here really quick, uh, looking at not just this, which is probably a little bit better than what you could do before. Um, it looks like you're able to actually put down little bus stops and then route the bus to them. But also, I like that they have the different colors. It looks like there's a lot of different colors going on there, uh, as well as they have the amount of cargo here. That's really what I was <laughs> looking at when I, when I paused, was they have the amount of cargo that you're routing through your city. So it's showing about 1,300 tons a month. Um, and as you add planes or uh, trains or ships, it looks like, and even semis, you can see how much cargo you are transporting. I'm assuming both in and out. That is something I'd like to see clarified a little bit is whether it's just total amounts of cargo, including just around your city. I'm going to assume that it's cargo around your city because it's showing routes there. It looks like you're going to have to place cargo routes, which is something that was really lacking in City Skylines 1, was the ability to, to route your cargo in a way that made sense. You just had to hope the AI could do it. So that's really exciting to see. I'm, I'm curious to see what they say in the developer highlights about that. Conditions are their Achilles heel. It's no big deal in a new metropolis, but it is for a growing city. That's when you'll level up your public transport. Think trains, trams, and subways. Each one has pros and cons. They're all expensive to build and complicated, requiring depots, tracks, and stops where passengers can buy tickets and get on and off. That means they can't offer the far-reaching service of a bus line or the door-to-door -door service of a taxi. On the other hand, they're more efficient, not least because they carry more people and cargo and reduce road congestion. They showed it before, but I just want to point out again, I really like this way of showing the uh, where it is in the route, as opposed to in City Skylines where it was just a, a straight line, a vertical line up and down. I also like how they show this kind of crossover area for the... Uh, stations as well as right there just really beautiful it's just really clean and i really like that question let's start with subways they're fast high capacity and they take up very little room when they're underground I've, if they operate i've talked about this in one of my videos um the transit hierarchy obviously this will all change with city skylines too uh, but i think it still applies there, just like there's a road hierarchy, there is a transit hierarchy. And that's what they're kind of touching on here. Above ground, you can run them on elevated tracks so they don't get tangled up with road traffic. 
trams. They're more flexible than trains, so you can more easily add lines to service new and expanded neighborhoods. Build tram tracks on existing roads, or that's run them on awesome. dedicated tracks if that's the best way to keep the hustle and bustle dialed up. Trains carry loads of people too, and not just suburbanites. They can bring visitors from outside your city in large numbers. Trains play another critical role as cargo transport. Build a cargo train terminal, and you build a hub where businesses can receive, ship, and store incoming and outgoing goods. Water transportation is another option for passenger travel and moving cargo. It's another high-capacity network, though water transport's real potential lies in imports and exports. You see, cargo ships might be slower than trains, but these bad boys can carry 1,000 tons of stuff to and from your city. Yeah, that's right. You can trade with other cities. There so you'll need go. somewhere to house all the goods and resources that's a coming that and going. Was also missing. Easy. Like cargo train terminals, cargo harbors double as cargo storage facilities. I'm glad they mentioned that. They double as cargo storage facilities, and I'm, I'm hoping they touch more on this. Um, but warehouses and things like that, of that nature, were also really lacking in City Skylines 1 in terms of a like logistics standpoint. If you were really into the logistics of moving things in and out of your town or even just around your town, it wasn't really easy. I'm inferring here based on that little one sentence thing that there is going to be a lot more thought put into their cargo transportation and logistics system, which is good. I'm, I'm excited. Like all of the other networks, air transportation has drawbacks. Planes carry fewer passengers and less cargo than ships and trains. Airports are also astronomically expensive also and have the true. footprint of a small town. Also very However, true. air transport has a pretty irresistible advantage speed. Plus, planes won't add to road congestion, they don't follow a rigid track, and they make outside connections incredibly easy. The transport mix in your city will become complex and intricate. Use the transportation overview to review passenger and cargo sure transportation really networks like separately. Filter again here, by transport okay. type to see high-level details about individual lines and toggle them Sorry, I had to go back to this because this is really cool. They're showing a usage here, and I'm assuming that's like percentage of the bus that is full every time it goes around in a loop. That I'm just I'm guessing here. It'll obviously take uh, a lot more in-depth videos than they're giving here, just clicking through these screens. Uh, but that's a way nicer way of maybe not necessarily better, but at least another good tool to evaluate whether or not your bus lines are operating efficiently. I also like the fact that they show the length of the route right here so you can evaluate, you know, like this one has 16 kilometers with eight buses and is being used 19%. Anyway, just tools like that are really nice to see and I'm really excited that they Review passenger these. and cargo transportation again, networks separately. A lot of Filter again by transport type to see high level details about individual lines and, and toggle them on or off. Use the transportation info view to understand the impact of your networks. Plan and manage transportation networks carefully to find the right tempo for the movement of people and cargo. Conduct it perfectly, and every citizen, trader, and tourist will march your city toward greatness. One thing that they don't really show that I'm kind of curious about is does the height of your bridges affect what ships can go under it? Or do or will they just clip under your bridges like they do in City Skylines 1? That said, there was a lot of really exciting things in there. I'm excited about the amount of thought they've put into the public and cargo transportation networks. I'm going to talk about developer insights number three, where they say transportation is fun with a question mark. So let's see what the developers have to say about that. Public and cargo transportation are as important in City Skylines 2 as they were in City Skylines 1. It looks very smooth, which is really nice. First, you create the depots. Then, you set up the stations or the stops. And then, you create the lines with the line tool. Okay. More like how you would 
you would do it in real life instead of just all of the land-based public buses. and cargo transportation types need depots to function the depots send out the vehicles and they also have upgrades that improve their functionality can be upgraded with an extra garage and electric buses okay so instead of building just a electric bus depot or it honestly being able to just select electric buses right from the get you have to upgrade it that's that's a nice little touch you you can't just build the best and you know you have to put some thought into uh, what kind of depot you want they also have employees here as you can see they have 22 out of 32 employees they also have some pollution and noise pollution metrics as well as vehicles in use and what all like the four different vehicles they have in use, what they're all doing. So one of them is currently boarding. The rest of them are just getting routed to the, the first spot in their destination. You can upgrade your bus depot to service electric buses. Increased capacity for rail yards and dispatch center for taxi depot. Similar things. Also, many of the different transportation modes can be connected by you the outside connections to create the lines that you want. You can now make your own intercity bus lines. Oh, that's that's really cool. Okay, so you can make intercity bus lines instead of uh, in City Skylines One. You had to have an intercity bus. There was a building or something. I can't remember exactly. Um, yeah, that's really cool. The trams are included in the base game. Cargo ships can carry a lot of cargo. They are slow, they completely skip traffic jams, but once they get to harbor and unload their cargo, they can cause a lot of traffic as the trucks pick up the cargo and transport it all over the city. In Cities 2, you can draw cargo lines between stops and outside connections. You are able to adjust the number of vehicles as well as the operating hours. They put those in, in one sentence, so I'm hoping they're like one complete thought. They're talking about cargo and being able to add the routes from other cities. And then they very quickly kind of switch over to the public transportation here, where they say you can select the number of vehicles. I'm hoping that they mean you can also select the number of vehicles that are coming from outside connections at each harbor. Because that is a huge thing for logistics and transportation. Like they said, you know, a, a cargo ship brings in a lot of cargo all at once. So if you have two or three or, you know, say 10 cargo ships coming in all at once, you're going to get a huge traffic jam. So the ability to limit it to, say, one or two at a time, and then maybe have a train that connects to it that goes to you know, take some of the cargo to other parts of the city. That would be huge. And I'm I'm hoping that that's what they were kind of alluding to there. And maybe I misinterpreted, but that would be really cool. Of course. With the buses, you can create intricate lines that skip traffic jams and busy intersections. They no longer need to go directly from stop to stop. That's Citizens cool. care about costs. I wonder how they do that. You can adjust the ticket price per line. If you make the cost too high, they might not ride your public transportation. Buses and taxis are unlocked with milestone progression, but every other transportation type you can unlock by using the development points. What do they mean by development points? The new international airport is huge. It's the size of a small town. Oh, that was great. That was great. You got all the words out? <laughs> yes, but I, I was so sad. <laughs> it's the size it's of a small town. I can't, uh, I'm so nervous. It is nice as well, seeing some of the, the humor from the developers and, and the team. You know, they're, they're trying to put out a good product. In this case, I mean the videos. And it... You know, everyone makes mistakes. I make mistakes even after I've edited my videos. And it's nice to see, like, that little bit of human side. Not your primary language and trying to get all these things out and say it in, you know, a, 
a good way for, for the video and to make sure that there's very little confusion about what you're saying and get people excited. Anyway, that's just fun to see. So <laughs> they, they will see it. They will see through me. <laughs> The game also features a line overview panel where you can inspect all your public and cargo lines. You can also access each line through the panel. The transportation info view panel has become much more detailed. The transportation info view lists all the different lines in your city categorized by public and cargo transportation. It also includes information about how many passengers there has been, and it also includes information about the amount of cargo transported per type per month. Okay, it is per month, not per, per week. So everything is done by month, as far as I can tell, with the uh, public and cargo transportation. So that was Developer Insights number three and the public and cargo transportation videos. There was a lot of good stuff to see in there, and I do want to give the developers credit. It looks like they've hashed out a lot of things and fleshed out a lot of the complaints that I had with City Skylines 1. Not a lot of the things are necessarily what I'd call new in this video uh, that they're showing compared to City Skylines 1. For example, City Skylines 1 had, you know, cargo ships, it had planes, it had the airports, it had trains and cargo trains and trucks and even warehouses and some logistics with uh, different industrial areas. But what is different, what I'm really excited about is how much more fleshed out it is, how much more customizable it is, realistic, right? As a mayor of City Skylines 1 Towns, you've had very few options unless you had a lot of mods installed. And a lot of those things are being incorporated into this game right from the very start. And honestly, even fleshing it out a little bit more than a lot of the mods did in City Skylines 1. And that's really exciting. Another exciting thing that I saw in this, and I, I may have touched on it briefly, I don't remember, uh, but they mentioned several times in the video trading with other towns, and that is something that was sorely missing in City Skylines 1. It was a feature of other city builders since forever. Um, one thing I'd like clarification from them on is if it's other, like, just computer-generated towns that you can't actually see or if you can trade with your own cities. But anyway, the ability to, to trade with, say, other real players or your own real cities just in other parts of the world, that would be really cool. And uh, I, I think if that's not something that they want to do or have implemented, I think it's something they should consider. Anyway, uh, that is it for these two videos. So if you like these, please uh, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I guess uh, go and uh, watch some other videos. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe. Or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?